part of Dr. Heimer's work and what you talk a lot about on your YouTube channel and everything are the five biological laws. So could you go into those? Yes. So the five biological laws, um, Dr. Hammer, you know, he, as he's doing this work and studying and uh, developing this, this science, he finds that there are these laws that nature operates under. And the first law is the iron rule of cancer. This is the connection between the psyche, the brain and the organ. So like I mentioned before, there's this conflict, this thing that catches you off guard. And it's not just general stress. It's not, oh, stress causes a breakdown in the body. That's, you know, the Hans Selye stress adaptation model model that the, there's breakdown over time, the body's depleted, the immune system's worn down, and then the cancer can grow. That's not how it operates. That a shocking trauma, something that catches the organism off guard, it's something you were unprepared for, caught on the wrong foot. In the moment that it happens, you feel all alone um, and, it's, and it's very shocking for you. And so at that moment, in that split second, your psyche perceives this event. And based on uh, the programming, the ancient programming in the body, a, a, a program is activated depending on the content of that situation. So it's different if you are, you know, thinking you're about to die versus you had a loss versus you want to separate from someone or you can't swallow something. So depending on the type of conflict that you experience, that's the psyche level. Um, there is an impact in your brain at the specific area um, that's necessary to adapt in order for you to survive. And then at the organ level, there are tissue adaptations. There's either cellular proliferation, so extra tissue cells, um, a loss of tissue cells, erosion, or a loss of function. And so that, it all happens at once. So when the shock happens, psyche, brain, organ, simultaneously, this program gets turned on, your body begins to adapt to help you through this shocking conflict. And so that is, that's the first biological law, psyche, brain, organ. Um, the second biological law is the law of two phases. And so, you know, in conventional medicine, they, they say that there's about, you know, 500 hot diseases, 500 cold diseases. They see them as separate things going on. But Dr. Hammer says, no, that's not what, they're not separate diseases. It's one, there is one um, process that's going on, but we're zooming in on it at different points um, in its progression. And so the body has a normal day-night rhythm. During the day, the body is more sympathetic, active. And so that is fight or flight. We're, we're hunting, we're gathering, we're you know gathering the things we need to survive. And then in the evening, we retire, the body shifts into parasympathetic dominance, rest and digest, feed and breed. And so that's the normal day-night rhythm. Now, the moment that you have a conflict shock, when this thing catches you off guard, um, the body shifts into heightened sympathetic mode. Everybody knows this, fight or flight. <laughs> so we're in fight or flight, but there's specific things going on during this fight or flight. It's not just general fight or flight. The body is adapting a specific organ to help you through whatever situation you're dealing with. So again, there's either that tissue growth, proliferation to produce more digestive juices, to absorb more oxygen, absorb more nutrients, or there's tissue loss to widen um, an opening. So a duct, if you have a certain fluid that needs to get into the digestive system or into your system in some way, uh, bloodstream, the duct can widen so that more can be pushed into the system more quickly. Um, or there's functional loss. And this goes on until the conflict is resolved. And so the longer, the more intense and the longer the conflict, the more tissue adaptation um, occurs until the moment of resolution. And so when you, if you look at the, the chart, um, there's a wonderful chart that will help you to really wrap your mind around how this operates. So when you are in conflict active, that's the cold phase. So this is when your hands are, and feet are cold, you're preoccupied, your mind is just like, how am I gonna solve this? How am I gonna solve this? Like you're searching for a solution. Often you'll be waking up um, at 3 a.m. Um, wide awake with insomnia because your, your subconscious mind is nudging you awake saying, hey, resolve this conflict. We've got to fix, what are we going to do about this? We have to fix this problem. Um, and and you're, yeah, like I said, you hands and feet are cold, low appetite. That's when you're in the conflict. And this is, you know, this is knowledge that people need to start understanding. Am I in a conflict right now? Is there something in my life that is unresolved? Because you have to take this, this model, this knowledge and apply it in your own experience so that you can start navigating um, more wisely based on these biological laws. And so that goes on until you resolve it, until oh, there's that sigh of relief of, oh, okay, it's good. We're going to be okay. We we found the thing that was lost. Um, the the person that was sick has recovered. The 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 money that we needed has come through. The sigh of relief, and when the body oh, has that sigh of relief, it shifts from conflict active 
active adaptation into the healing phase. And now the healing phase is when most people think that they are, quote, sick. This is when you become symptomatic for, you know, there are some conflicts where you can have symptoms during the conflict active phase, but for the vast majority of conflicts, you are, you know, you're just preoccupied and you're stressed, stressed out during the conflict. And then when you resolve it, you shift into fatigue Oh, because you were in fight or flight. The body was actively using more resources to try to help you to survive that situation. Now it's like, we've made it to safety. We got to, we got to relax. You've got to go into the healing phase and in the healing phase, there's swelling. Um, there's fluid accumulation at the organ level and at the brain level, because we have to repair, we have to set the body back to normal. So if tissues proliferated during the active phase, those tissues are no longer needed. They need to be decomposed. If we eroded tissue during that phase, we now need to build it back up. And so that's what's happening. There's a construction zone um, in your body and your body is going through this process of tissue restoration and healing. And this is when you think you're sick. This is when uh, recently someone was messaging me about, um, they had a, a very severe sore throat. And uh, I'm like, this is the healing phase when you have a very severe sore throat and swelling and you can't talk and it's hard to swallow. Your body is restoring tissue in in that area um, to set you back to normal. And, and she said, it doesn't feel like it's healing. It's it feels like I need a new throat. And I go, that's actually exactly what's happening. You are getting a new throat. Your body is repairing and restoring tissues that were eroded because your throat widened because you couldn't swallow something that you were experiencing. And when you can't swallow something, your body interprets that literally. So even if it wasn't a literal um, situation, if you couldn't swallow a a, a situation that occurred, um, your body experiences that like a, like something physical that you couldn't swallow. And so it makes your throat wider. And now once you're in the healing phase, your body has to restore that tissue. And so you're literally getting a new throat and that's why it feels so bad. And this is um, when people understand that when you're symptomatic, your body is in this restoration phase. Again, you look at it differently. You don't say, oh no, I got to kill this bacteria. I have to get rid of, you know, this thing that's attacking my throat. Nothing's attacking your throat. Um, Your body is in a restoration phase. Now, when you get to the point of maximum swelling, when your body has reached the maximum point of healing, there's a big squeeze. And so this is a, um, we have to squeeze out the fluid from the organ level and from the brain level so that the body can continue on with the healing phase. And this is called the epicrisis. And the epicrisis often will happen around 3, 4 a.m. Um, when you get to the deepest point of rest and vagotonia and it's almost like you'll dream, you'll dream what the original conflict was. And the body has a sympathetic surge to squeeze out the edema. This will be like a coughing fit, a sneezing fit, you know, even a heart attack, a stroke, a seizure is that height of healing. Um, And then the body goes into, um, you'll have a urinary phase where you pee out all that water that you had accumulated. And then the body goes into the second phase of healing where there's continued restoration. And then you go back to the normal day night rhythm. And so this, that's the process of the second biological law.